Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about King Sundews. I've been getting a lot of requests lately on how I care for my King Sundews, and I'll be the first to admit I am not an expert at it. I have six plants that I have germinated from seed. I germinated them six months ago. Um, actually, nine months ago, sorry. And they are now, this is a little golf pencil. They're now, the leaves are about as big as a golf pencil. So just to give you a little bit of reference as to how big they actually are. Uh, this pot here has bigger plants in than this pot. When I divided them up, I put three per pot for now, just to keep um, them contained in space. They will eventually need their own one gallon pots. <clears throat> the neighborhood is super noisy today. So hopefully you can hear me. There's like a chainsaw and a wood chipper going up on the hill there. And uh, it's been going all day, so tried to wait as long as I could to see if um, it would quiet down but it hasn't really so I'm just going to film and see how it turns out anyways um, I want to go back to when I germinated these guys I germinated them without stratification and I just germinated them on a mixture of perlite and peat uh, with a top dressing just of plain peat to make sure I got good contact they germinated really quickly. Took them about two weeks before I started seeing germination. I germinated them in the house and it was in around February at some point. So uh, they were under two four foot fluorescent lights, about two inches away from the light. So it was quite bright. They were in a sealed container so they had 100% humidity and they germinated very quickly. <clears throat> from there they actually do, uh, germinated and grew quite quickly. I put them outside as the weather warmed up. Um, by April, May, I was able to put them out and move them out into the greenhouse. And I would actually move them out into direct sun um, whenever I could, whenever it wasn't too hot, to harden up the little tiny seedlings. So the seedlings, what they were out in direct sun, and they got um, more acclimatized to it. There was no problems with it because I did it right away. And I was very conscious of how warm the pot was and how warm the leaves were. So from the start, these guys did get bright, bright light and fairly cool temperatures. They grew quite well and I fed them whatever I could. They were in the greenhouse so they would catch their own food. Then they actually moved outside for the summertime and they spent outside um, in the sun in the summertime. The only time I would move them was in hot hot direct noonday sun I would try to keep them out of that as much as I could at the time I kept them very moist they would sit in a tray of water and then I would move them out of the tray of water for like the nighttime and let them dry out sort of thing so they never um, were like submerged the tray of water was probably about one centimeter deep and they were in about four centimeters of or four centimeters of peat so it was about a 25 percent um, tray of water if you're um, thinking up the pot to the dirt. From there uh, they were getting good sun, good food, they were growing quite quickly. The I had no trouble with them. They got to about an inch leaf length and then something started to happen and they didn't look so good. This was in August and I can't say for sure what it was. I chalk it up to two things. One, it was quite hot, and I think they got a little bit warm. And the other was, I think they were, as I said, sitting in water about 12 hours a day, and then draining for about 12 hours a day, and all the roots started rotting. Now, from what I read, this was the big problem with King Sundews. You would get them germinated, you would get them growing, and then all of a sudden, they would just die mysteriously when the leaves are about an inch to two inches long. What I found at this point, when I noticed one was declining, I unpotted that pot, and all of the roots on all of them pretty much had started withering and rotting away. At the same time, they were growing some, I'm going to call them for lack of a better word, adult roots. Thick, big, meaty ones like you would see on other um, large sundews that were starting to push out of the um, tissue itself. So I think there's this transition period where they're losing their fine little roots and getting bigger, stronger roots. And at that point, is a really critical time. 
When I noticed this happening, I made sure I kicked them right out of the sun, cooled them right down, being it was quite warm, being August. I also upped the perlite in the mix substantially, being they were unpotted anyways. It's now probably a 75% perlite mix to 25% peat, and there's actually a handful of aquarium gravel in there as well. So it is a very rocky, airy mix um, that drains really readily at this point. And they seem to recover. I lost one out of the seven that germinated. I had 10 seeds. So I had seven germinate. I now have six. Um, and they have sort of pushed past that point, I think, and seem to be growing quite well. They're in the greenhouse. The weather right now is quite cool. It's 73 degrees in here. I grow them under lights. Um, so they get 12 hours of light a day, even though it's winter time now and nighttime temperatures is 50 to 55 in here so they have a, a good fluctuation in temperature but it is cooler it's not the hot direct sun that they um, got before I'm beginning to sort of grow them almost like a cobra lily where I think they like cool roots and bright but cooler temperatures and in almost like a cephalotus soil well draining and that sort of thing now I'm going to show you a few tools that I have here. I use these tweezers quite frequently. I use these little snips quite frequently. I always make sure that the leaves are trim and proper so I can get in there with these and cut the leaf. And I remove any dead leaves before they have a chance to go rotten, just like that. So I'm always maintaining these guys. They grow leaves quickly, but they lose leaves quickly. So don't be alarmed that there's always one or two sort of dying or dead leaves on the plant every leaf is definitely coming back bigger so I'm not worried there Remove that one as well another thing I do especially with the seedlings is I took particular care in making sure they were covered to the exact right amount down at the base making sure that none of the little juvenile roots or um, newly ex uh, growing roots were exposed to the air I covered them up and I did it painstakingly with a few grains of peat and sand and gravel and perlite at a time to make sure it was exactly right per plant. If any plant got exposed in the wrong way, I made sure I covered it up to keep the humidity around the roots. I didn't want anything to desiccate further. And it seems to have helped. These two little tools are very indispensable to me at this point. As I say, in, as for the media, I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer. You can see the media there. It's quite rocky and it's actually quite dry. What I do for watering now is I water them just like a cephalotus. So I do bottom water. I put them in a tray of water that's about 25% up the, the um, depth of the pot. And I only leave them in it for about 10 minutes and then I take them back out and that is their watering. Their soil is always quite dry and they seem to be doing quite well in it. The soil itself you can see it just mixes around, it's very loose. Um, what else can I tell you? I use this little pipette here. If I do need to top water I do it sparingly and I bring it right in to make sure I'm just watering exactly where it needs to be and I'm not moving any of the soil around. As I say, it's not compacting soil, so if I was to water heavily on the top, the, the soil would move around, which is what I don't want. Uh, what else? I'm going to turn on the above light for a second. So that is the light. It is just a cool white bulb. Uh, it's actually two compact fluorescent cool white bulbs, total of 50 watts or so above it. I have... A light meter here and I will tell you that it is about a thousand foot candles of light right above the plants. The bulbs are literally a few inches away from the plants so they get bright bright light. I'm not sure if that's better with the light on or the light off so let's try it back off. I think it's better with it off. Less glare. So we talked about um, light from last year. As I say, I haven't been growing them for that long, so I'm by no means an expert. We talked about the current lighting. 
We talked about the old water system where they sat in a tray of water 12 hours a day. We talked about the new water system which I'm having much more success with. I see them pushing out bigger adult roots all the time now, which is fantastic. Um, oh yes, another thing that is very important is feeding them. I have tried freeze-dried bloodworms and what I find the best though is this is koi pellet dust from the bottom of the bin and that is what I have been feeding them. I don't feed them often, I feed them probably once a month and I just put the little tiniest bit of dust on their sticky tentacles. So I take some in my fingers here like so, can you even see it in there, and I just sprinkle from above. If the pellet is too big, it will go rotten on the leaf. I don't know if you can see, I'm actually holding my finger above and just dusting the leaves with, with this. Try to get a little bit on, on most leaves. And being in the greenhouse, they still catch the odd bug as well. But feeding these guys is very important. I've done this from the start. When I slack off and don't feed them for a, a while, I notice them, the slowed growth. Um, just the opposite, when I do feed them, I notice accelerated growth. So I think feeding them is very, very important as well. The plan for next year is I will probably divide them up come um, spring, depending on the size of them. Bigger pots is going to be better. Lighter pots over darker pots to keep the roots cool. As the greenhouse warms, they're going to end up outside again, but I'm going to make sure they don't hit afternoon, noonday sun. I think it's going to be a morning sun this time around and see how that goes for them. Humidity in the greenhouse is 85 to 95 percent all the time. You can see how dewy everything is. Very, very dewy. Um, they do really well in the higher humidity. But outside they had quite a bit of dew on as well and the humidity in the summertime here is um, no more than 50-65% or so. So they don't need super high humidity all the time. Anyways, that is a long boring tutorial on how I care for my sundew seedlings. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. As always, thanks for watching. So that gives you an idea of what they look like and the size they are compared to the pot. The leaves are about the same size as the pot now. So they're about four inch to five inch leaves. That's a good leaf right there. That's maybe five, six inches. You can just see the sprinkle of fish food on the leaves. I won't do that again for another month or so. I always do it sparingly at first. If it is going to rot or hurt the leaves, you'd rather hurt one or two leaves than the whole plant.